So good evening, everyone. We have four members of the technical committee with us tonight for a technical committee buff. So okay. let's get started. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who here, weren't here earlier, don't know who I am. I'm B. Dale. Um, I currently serve as chairman of the Debian Technical Committee. We have three other members with us uh, present. In fact, let me go ahead and change the next slide. This is the current membership of the committee. I thought Steve Lankshek was going to be here by now, and there are rumors that emails from him are flying around, so a plane may have landed somewhere or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm here. Uh, Russ Albury and Don Armstrong are not here this year. Um, Andy's here, Ian and Colin, and as I said, I think Steve is on the way, but I haven't actually seen him yet. So uh, this is the current membership of the technical committee. I guess the change from uh, last year is that Manoj Srivastava chose to step down from the committee. I think we all thank him for his service to the committee over the years. Um, we are, of course, considering um, possible new members for the future. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, to just sort of set context, for those of you who don't think about these details all the time, the existence of the Debian Technical Committee is defined by Section 6 of the Debian Constitution. These various sub-pieces um, sort of provide the context and the authority by which the committee exists and uh, in some ways bound what the um, sort of desirable and appropriate areas of activity by the committee are a couple of things that um, I think are worth uh, pointing to out specifically are the fact that 635 sort of suggests that it's not really within the technical committee's purview to be designing new proposals. That doesn't mean that members of the technical committee can't be themselves coming up with new ideas or uh, contributing to group activities that lead to new proposals, but the real purpose of the committee when it boils down to you know, sort of the simplest form is that we're here to help arbitrate and help make decisions when developers uh, working on software or, or other things within the project cannot decide among themselves what the right answer is, and that's really um, sort of the, the focus of what the technical committee is about. So unlike in some projects where there's a lot of decision making that happens on a routine basis um, by some overarching technical body, in Debian our constitution sort of inverts that responsibility, if you will, and the vast majority of decisions are assumed to be uh, owned by and made by individual developers working on uh, the things that they do for the project, and it's only when those developers come into conflict and need help resolving uh, questions that the technical committee generally becomes involved. Um, <clears throat> having said that, uh, we have, over the last year or so, been trying to have uh, semi-regular IRC meetings. I think approximately once a month, though they don't always go off as planned. Um, these are not um, necessarily where big decisions get made, but they're an opportunity for us to remind each other on the committee of what the open action items are, to discuss informally what progress we've made working on the various issues, and in effect to sort of poke each other to see who volunteers to take the lead on taking the next steps on some things. And one of the consequences of that that I'm very pleased about to report on is that this year, the list of open issues before the committee right now does not include anything that was on that list this time a year ago. And that's actually the first time in several years that I've been able to say that. We had a couple of long-standing, thorny, ugly problems that nobody really knew how to or wanted to deal with. And uh, those have all been resolved. So the issues that are, the five issues that are actually open in the bug tracking system uh, before the committee this year are, um, you know, all essentially sort of current things, and I feel pretty good about that. Um, with that, that's really um, the, the sum of the sort of presentation part of what I wanted to do today to provide a little bit of context with four of the now seven of us here and the possibility that Steve might show up at some point. Um, this is an excellent opportunity for any of you who have questions about any of the open issues, uh, opinions on things, want to understand how the committee thinks about things, what we're 
what our thoughts are on some of these matters or whatever, to ask questions and for us to have an open discussion. This is meant to be a boff, not a presentation. So at this point, I'm going to step down from the stage, join my colleagues in the chairs over here. We've got a mic that we'll pass around, and there's at least one here that uh, will be used to take questions from the audience. So who would like to kick things off? Come on, don't be shy. You didn't all come up here just because it's a prettier place to sit. Yeah, Keith. I'm supposed to have a question now? I just came up for the view. <laughs> no, it wasn't exciting, it was disturbing, he said. Um, are, there, are there pending issues, do you have a queue of uh, issues that you're looking at that you think are going to become things that the tech community needs to resolve? And what kinds of things are, are looking like they are becoming issues within the community? Uh, no, we don't have a list of things that we're kind of holding off on putting on that list. Um, that's the list of the things that we know are on our plate. Um, I'm sure people have their own ideas about what things might be turning up at the technical committee, formally or informally. We had a bit of discussion recently about the whole system D thing, but I was about to ask. Um, <laughs> that. It, it doesn't seem to have congealed yet into the kind of question that anybody could decide on. And I think that's one of the reasons why we keep having these conversations. Well, and by the way, the technical committee doesn't just act because we think we need to act. So we only act if, if uh, Peter shows a list of things before. So if developers couldn't agree on it, um, people could um, ask us to make a decision they could do or similar. But we're not just doing a decision because we think it might be an issue that needs to be decided. So unless asked later on in that process, I don't think we're currently there active. Which doesn't prevent us from looking at the things. Right, and I think uh, specifically with regard to systemd and upstart, the, uh, the parties involved are still actively throwing code at each other. And uh, until it gets to the point where either somebody wins or uh, they feel that uh, they've reached utter impasse and there's no further way that anything can develop, I think that's, that would be the point when, uh, when it would be brought to us. And uh, I devoutly hope that it doesn't. Yeah, so generally um, things are brought to the committee because there's an existing bug in the BTS that someone, you know, that, that people are getting in an argument over how it ought to be resolved or something like that and those bugs get reassigned to us. Occasionally somebody writes a new bug submission as a way of crafting a question for the committee, but uh, generally when that happens, um, it's an indication that it's going to either be something that's only marginally within the tech committee's responsibility or um, that it's going to be particularly difficult to resolve. The things, the questions where we're the able to sort of act, I think, the most expeditiously is where it's a question of, you know, yes or no on this particular patch set or this particular, you know, intended change. Um, the last one on the list here is actually sort of an interesting example that's somewhere between some of those things and the sort of system D kind of question in that, uh, we were sort of asked to help make a decision about which of the JPEG library implementations should be the default one uh, that lives in the distribution. And this is a case where, you know, the initial set of questions that we fired back um, at the parties involved were all around, you know, are we really to the point where we can sort of pick A or B, or are there in fact things that would have to be implemented or something for us to have a complete solution in place? Part of the reason it's not completely resolved yet is, at least in my mind, I don't think we have a complete set of answers to those questions yet, though maybe it's just because I have been a little distracted lately. But um, in looking at it, um, this has led to a very healthy discussion where people are pointing out um, what other distributions are doing. Uh, there's discussion about what the technical basis of the distinctions between the different implementations are, uh, pointing to conflicts in external standards bodies that lead to you know, matters of interpretation about what the right way to proceed is and so forth. And that's all exactly the kind of you know, sort of helping to, to muddle through the, what, what in the end is sort of a combination of a technical choice bound up in you know, which of two forks of a, 
of a project we ought to be paying the most attention to kind of thing that I think it's useful for us as a committee to try and help with. But um, as Colin says, you know, when you're in a situation where uh, people with competing uh, ideas or competing proposals are still sort of, you know, rapidly throwing code at each other, it's not time for us to be involved. Um, if, if we had our choice, most such decisions would be resolved by the developers in question and never come to the committee. Yeah, I just wanted to expand on that a bit. Um, so the JPEG one, at least in principle, is something where there's a specific technical change that the TC could decide to do one way or the, the other. It amounts to the ownership of libjpeg dev, the package name, and you know what JPEG library you get if you install that, and there are a whole bunch of consequences that flow from that, but there's actually a clear underlying technical decision to be made. And the, the systemd one, I think one of the reasons why the um, the argument keeps turning up again on Debian developers because there's a lot of fear about what might or might not be done and are people you know, worried about this and people pushing their various agendas. But there's not actually a particular technical change that somebody who is in charge of something as a maintainer or that the technical committee as an arbitration body could, could decide on. There's, nobody is proposing, oh, well, we will make the following specific changes, the following packages, to achieve this objective. At the moment, people are still talking in woolly terms about throwing this in or throwing that out or making everything the default or making everything mandatory. And uh, it's, it's not really at an actionable decision. And um, I'm personally, I'm hoping that before we have to have another conversation about the merits of one thing or another, we might get to the point where there is actually two different technical things that might be done. Um, and then we could have a question about which of those was better. Right, and if now if you look at the last issue that we have with libjpeg, what we're actually doing is there, we can't decide, but what we're doing is to get to a, 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 um, a place where we know, okay, what are the benefits of which solution, so that we actually could do a decision. And we have, with libjpeg, we are near to that place with a, um, with a, let's say, a, a, a system D or whatever discussion, we are far more away from it. And driving something to that place can, can actually be done by the developers in question. It doesn't need a technical committee, but um, yeah, we could try to help there if necessary. But it's not something which is special on us, but just um, special on getting things done in a way that everybody would understand what it implies and means. So I would say then, next question. <laughs> so currently the release team, uh, sorry, the uh, technical committee gets into action only if uh, explicitly addressed. Um, so would the committee see uh, it's all uh, a bit more proactive if, um, well, some kind of development is stalled within Debian? Um, two examples for that. Um, the one is architecture requalification. We had that addressed last TEPCONF. Nothing did happen. We did have it addressed shortly after the uh, WZ release. Uh, until now, nothing much did happen. There are a lot of teams involved with that. Um, and I think um, something should happen, but um, nobody tries to do something. The other thing is, um, um, I'm a bit stuck with my proposal about verbose build logs, which it seems everybody uh, seems to be in, in violent agreement about that, but nothing does happen. It's stalled, and um, it would be nice to base some further QA work on that. So um, general development would help. So the question again, um, could the technical committee a bit more proactive for kind of these things? Okay, I will just start with the first question. Um, as some of you know, I was member of, uh, or I'm still a member of the release team. I was a release manager a few years ago. So, who does do this decision which architectures are in Debian and with which architectures Debian releases? Um, the first question which architectures are in Debian in the archive is done by FTP masters. And the second question which architectures are part of a release are done by the release team. Um, so, I think those are the two bodies of Debian who have the first say on that. If someone disagrees with their decisions, um, of course it could be <coughs> escalated to the technical committee. 
obviously, like with other technical decisions, people don't agree with being it's that a patch was rejected by a maintainer or whatever else. Um, but I think one should give them the chance um, for the, uh, as I say, decide first. And what I have seen is that the release team is at least currently um, still in the, uh, let's say, a post release uh, mode where they are trying to get the thing starting again for the new release. However, um, I personally wouldn't expect uh, decisions on which architectures are fit for the next release or not within the next uh, few months, just because they are currently again um, getting things uh, summed up. Um, my personal expectation, however, is that um, I think we are going to lose one or two architectures um, that were already sharp um, on the edge last time. For example, currently Spark doesn't run well on our abilities with the uh, kernels that we have in stable, and just with the kernel old stable. So I'm not sure this will, go, uh, will happen another release cycle, just as an example. Yeah. Then I will forward. Uh, the, I think uh, on the on more general point of whether the uh, uh, on proactivity of the tech committee, um, the question I would normally ask is: uh, Is it going to improve the situation for for us to do that? So, um, uh, in the in the case of verbose build logs, I, I will I'll join in your violent agreement as a developer, um, as a member of the tech committee. I would question whether coming down from the mountain on, uh, on, the, on the matter would uh, actually get things done or just make people feel like they're being steamrolled or steamrollered and instinctively pushed back. Um, so I would, uh, I think my, my recommendation for ways forward in that is uh, uh, I think I've, I've seen uh, a lot of general recommendations that we should be doing X, Y, and Z, but not generally patches to that effect. And uh, uh, I'd probably suggest patches, wait a month or two, followed by uh, NMU campaign, um, pursuant to the usual rules. And that sort of thing is probably likely to get things done more effectively and uh, annoying fewer people in the process than by the uh, technical committee coming down and laying down tablets of stone in the matter. Uh, that, that's specifically the case with a, with a thing like the verbose build logs where really very few people, if any, I, I've seen no discussion from anybody suggesting that this is a bad idea. Um, everybody seems to agree that it's at best neutral and a lot of people are in favour. So it's not really the case that there's a disagreement for the technical committee to resolve. There's just some undone work. And uh, like anything in the project, if there is some undone work that is bothering you that it's not being done, well, there's a very simple solution to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, there is, I think there are one or two glitches, but there is nothing major at this point. <laughs> so the constitution reads that the technical committee can be asked for advice. In the past I haven't seen this being invoked very often. So uh, can you give an example of when to uh, ask the committee for advice and how to do that? Because I don't think it's been done by in, uh, creating a bug. Right. So. Um, the way that has mostly happened up until now that I'm aware of has been through informal processes, usually not asking the committee as a whole for an opinion as much as seeking out individual members of the committee and asking their opinions on things. Uh, we have had a few cases in the past where someone sent an email to the committee's email list uh, saying, you know, this is not something that I feel compelled to file a bug about at this point, but I could use some advice, and we've had a couple like that. Um, Ian has actually, I think one of the drafts that you've got up right now is related to um, making a more uh, formal, you, you could describe this better than I am, making a sort of more formal assertion of what the mechanisms are by which we can have uh, sort of non-binding open conversations about things like this. Or, I think you're referring to the proposal to regularize private communications with the committee. 
Um, so it doesn't happen very often, but particularly sometimes people have, you know, technical things get mixed up with interpersonal things, and at the moment it's very difficult for the committee to deal with that in a, in a kind of properly above board way because according to the constitution we're supposed to do everything in public. Um, but it's very difficult to have a conversation about whether we should replace somebody as a package maintainer or indeed mediate at an early stage when things are going <laughs> badly wrong if everything, you know, if everything has to be out in public. Um, in particular, if you want to go to the committee and say, I'm having a bit of trouble talking to this particular maintainer, you know, can you help, like, help us out here? That would be a very valuable thing for us to be able to do um, because then we'd have a history you know, if, if, if it does come to the crunch and we have to decide um, on a package maintainership, we've already got some kind of experience dealing with the maintainer ourselves, and it doesn't immediately escalate the whole thing to a big public slanging match. Um, it can be just, you know, I, I think we're having a bit of a misunderstanding, can you help us out, which is a very um, useful thing to do. Um, so uh, one of the things that I've suggested is that the constitution should be changed specifically to allow us to have those private conversations not private decision making but at least private communications um, in a sense you can't really stop people doing that and we as committee members we've occasionally had emails sent to some or all of the committee at our private email addresses um, and this doesn't seem like a particularly good way of carrying on and in the best will in the world you have to respond to these emails in a constructive manner, um, so it's just a bit. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that, Ian. So um, in the case where what you would like is advice on a technical issue as opposed to you know, a problem dealing with uh, some individual in the project, um, then I think sending an email to our committee mailing list is probably as good as anything in terms of getting the entire committee's attention. Um, certainly while we're here at DebCon, for those of you who are here, uh, this is an opportune time to you know, come find us casually in the hallways or whatever and, and get advice or guidance or input or whatever. Uh, I know that you know, part of the reason we all agreed to participate on the committee is that we all have an intense passion for this project and a strong desire to see things continue to improve and get better. And if a little bit of conversation about something will help you get past a, a technical hurdle or you know, f f help figure out the best way to do something where you're not in conflict with somebody else, you just yourself could use some advice and guidance on how to do it, then we're more than happy to help with as much of that as you'd like to take advantage of us for. I think I speak for everybody on that. So there's one other thing I want to say about that. It's not really in direct response to your question, but your question was, I think, prompted by the, the thing in the, the list of, you know, powers that the committee is empowered to give advice. Um, we often do that off our own bat. Um, if we are, uh, somebody comes to us with a decision, um, sometimes either as part or the entire disposal of that is we'll, you know, the actual formal resolution from the committee will say, and furthermore, our opinion on this, you know, our non-binding opinion is, is, is this, and that can be useful as guidance to other people in the project, and it can also be useful to people who need to guess what the committee might do in the future. Um, but in terms of, you, you wouldn't really want to ask for that because the, the, the formal decision-making process for the committee of having votes on resolutions is quite cumbersome and not really suited to easily giving advice. But if you just want, if you just got some question and you want um, e either about a technical disagreement or just about a technical question they're not sure of, um, we can certainly help, and just mailing us is a good plan. Nick? Yeah, I have uh, Gunnar Wolf in the IRC. Uh, he, he says, I guess when those semi-personal issues arrive to tech the technical committee, they should be redirected to DPR mediation. Being the DPR, a single person, and being his boss, most directly linked to social personal mediation? Uh, I think I'd say that it would depend on the cause. If it's, uh, if it's one of those things that happens all the time where you get a, people, people get really passionate about a, about a technical dispute and it escalates into either 
basically just calling each other names or uh, or there is some kind of more deeply rooted uh, dispute about each other's working styles come up that comes up that sort of thing happens a lot and in that case uh, uh, some, sometimes w sometimes we're best off just addressing the technical issue and not actually trying to get every single person in the project to get along um, sometimes it really is a, something that needs personal mediation um, and uh, I don't know that we've talked much about the interplay with DPL mediation, but uh, maybe we could ask them for help rather than necessarily just handing it all over to them. And it also depends on what the outcome is or needs to be. If we notice that the conflict is already broken in a way that we need to decide, for example, about the ownership of a package, we can't just forward it to someone else because we need to take a decision at the end. Um, of course, depends. Sometimes it's, it's just best to, to tell both people and say, please try to get mediation instead of calling a technical committee. In other cases, it might not be that useful. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm not sure I speak for my colleagues here, but I have a, a, a personal view on this. Um, so, the, the technical committee is empowered by the Constitution to make decisions about package maintainership. And many of these kind of disputes that might be helpfully resolved through mediation ultimately if mediation fails need to be resolved by a decision about package maintainership and it's not really helpful to have those kind of things come to the committee very very late um, when everybody's already you know had all particularly after a mediation attempt has already been attempted and, and has failed because the committee then doesn't have any information to work on and what we have is a, is a series of historical disputes about who said what to whom when but the committee doesn't ha hasn't had the experience of of dealing with those people ourselves um, so i think it would be most useful if the technical committee could take on more of that mediation role and this is something that we've not historically done very much of for a number of reasons. One is there's this problem in the Constitution that we're not supposed to have private conversations, which obviously is very difficult. You can't mediate unless you can talk to people privately to both sides. Um, secondly, there's, as you say, there's a feeling that the, maybe this is something that an elected person like the DPL would be, would be better to do. And thirdly, people just don't really ask it of us, mostly maybe for the first two reasons. Um, so one of the things I'm trying to do with my proposed constitutional change is to make it easier for the technical committee to engage in mediation. And that's not to say that the DPL mediation is a bad idea. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that hopefully um, produce good results. Um, historically, our, in the project, our procedures for dealing and processes for dealing with interpersonal problems and various other kinds of problems haven't always been very good and it's good to see us trying out various different things. Then I think there was another question here. Or so next question please. I think someone raised his hand before. Ah, good. It's not a true question, it's just uh, do you have an idea when you will be able to make a decision on the, who you will appoint as a new member in the <laughs> team? Yeah, um, I have to take some personal responsibility for the fact that this is taking so long. Um, the, uh, sometime actually last year, we began a process of um, sort of looking for you know, a possible new member for the committee. And there are actually uh, multiple people in the room whose names were floated as possibilities for that. And uh, we started off by saying, okay, the, all the people whose names have been raised, we should begin by asking them if they would actually be interested before we go and have some long discussion and debate about who would be the right person to ask. And um, the, uh, the responsibility to do that fell on my shoulders. I did that. We got answers from everybody. And then things kind of came to a screeching halt for a couple of reasons that aren't important. Um, then we got into a situation where, um, as I said, Manoj uh, chose to, to leave the committee. And that sort of distracted us for a little while. And we started thinking again about this. And then we had a DPL election. And then, quite frankly, um, 
I've been a little distracted by the events in my personal life for the last couple months. So um, without going into a lot of details or anything, I will take sort of personal responsibility for the fact that this has been delayed for a while. Um, I, think, I think it is time for us, in fact, probably while we're here, those of us that are here will talk about this some more, but in terms of actually coming to a decision, I don't want to try and make some hard assertion about it, but it's back on my mind, and we're all starting to think and talk about it again, so I would hope we'll get through that process and actually invite, you know, additional member or two to the committee sometime reasonably soon. Any of you want to? Um, I think one should also be aware that this is nothing, nothing which we need to have fulfilled to a certain day uh, and say we need it definitely because otherwise we're not going to continue working. And what we definitely want to do is we want to find someone who really fits in, who makes our decisions better. Um, and it's a bit hard to, um, to uh, it's, it's, not, it's not that we all say, well, yes, it's obvious this person is the list we're going to, uh, to take, but uh, different candidates have different advantages, so we, we are still at discussing, which I think is also quite important on that. Uh, you say fits in or possibly doesn't fit in because one of the things that we could do with is uh, more diversity in the committee. Um, but uh, So, yeah, I agree with what Colin just said. Um, but also, I mean, I, I take a slightly different view about this. I think it's quite unfortunate that this has taken so long. And as a member of the committee, I bear some responsibility along with the rest of us um, for having let this sit undone for so long. And I know that, you know, if you've had your name put forward, you naturally wonder what has become of this? Do we not like you? You know, anything like that? No, um, I'm, I'm afraid that really there's, there's, there's no good answer to this than that we're just being a bit crap about this. Um, and uh, so our apologies. Yeah, so um, I wasn't implying, uh, said I'm happy about the current state. So if someone understood it that way, it I'm, I really think we should have been further than we are. However, it's uh, let's say um, it's not it's not like that uh, that uh, with, with other long-standing bugs that we had where people were, were fighting about how to go on with certain things. But yes, we should finish this. And I think the sooner the better. And fit in also might mean for me that we say okay, we have someone with an different approach to things which helps us to make our decisions better. So fits in is not, it looks the same like everyone already on the committee. So I hope to have clarified that now a bit. So next question. Hello, uh, my name is Michael Staperberg and I'm actually one of the SystemD maintainers, so naturally my question centers around this. Um, earlier you've said that there are still things that need to be done before we can actually make a technical decision about SystemD, whereas my current point of view is that we could just flip the switch. So let me just ask, what are these things that need to be done before? Uh, so, y uh, are you proposing, I, you see the thing is that I'm missing is that you don't seem to be, as far as I know, um, we're missing a kind of concrete proposal in terms of, are you proposing a patch to policy? Um, for example, um, those materials, I, I, I haven't seen a, a proposed patch to the policy, for example, floating about. Is that, um, if, if that's the stage that you think you're at, um, then I think you should write that up and suggest it, um, because that would give us something concrete to accept or reject. Um, what I really might suggest, even if it's not, not about your package, is if that you look in the backlog of libjpeg and see which kind of questions we ask to get at what we really need to be able to decide on. And I think it's not only for us relevant to decide, but also for the project. So just as a suggestion, take a short look there and look at the kind of questions we ask there. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think that clarifies it. Good. So, next question. I mean, this is for you to ask uh, questions to us. We have about 10 minutes. So, okay. What would be a good level of um, frequency or number of issues to be brought to the technical committee? I mean, do you think it just happens to magically be perfect as it is, or <laughs> it should be used more? 
Uh, well, actually, if you ask me, I would be happy if just every conflict would be resolved before it takes to us. Yeah, it's, it's, that's one of those questions. It's like asking, um, what's the good rate of test failures? <laughs> right? So, in one sense, the good rate of test failures is zero. But if actually your test failure rate is zero, it means your tests aren't working. So, um, you know, if uh, previously the rate of ref referral of issues to the technical committee was very, very low indeed, and that was mostly because everybody knew that nothing would happen. Um, we've been a lot better recently. We're making decisions um, more quickly, um, sometimes very quickly. Um, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I would encourage people who have had, you know, if you have a problem that you think is, is worthwhile and, um, and that's not being addressed properly, please do bring it to the committee. And I'm expecting that we will have to go through a continued increase in straightforward technical decisions, a bit like the LibJPEG one or the ones we've had recently. Um, and I think it would be healthy for us to deal with quite a few more of those so that, because that exerts a kind of back pressure, right? If you're a maintainer and somebody disagrees with you, um, having the possibility that the person who is seeing me will actually take it to the technical committee and you might be overruled will be a useful thing that people might start to think about. And at the moment, that's not really something that as a maintainer, I myself as a maintainer don't really need to worry about the idea that somebody would disagree with me enough to take it to the committee. And I wouldn't even get to vote on it myself. So. Um, yeah, uh, I think it would be healthy if we have a higher rate than we have at the moment, at least for a bit. And um, if we start getting things that I think people should have been obvious, well, when we have had a, a, a one or two things that were brought to us recently where the, the answer was quite obvious, and to be honest, it doesn't take a great deal of our time to dispose of something obvious. I was going to say that I think um, I have sort of a split personality about this because on one hand, my personal mental model is that you take things to the technical committee when there's a failure of the ability to make a decision um, that everyone can live with without going and getting some higher authority to do it for you. And so as a developer, I'm much more inclined personally to want to you know, take a deep breath, go off in a corner, think about it, and make a decision than I am to go sort of seek an overrule from, from somebody else. Um, so that leads me to believe that um, having a substantially larger number of questions come to the committee would somehow mean that something somewhere else in our overall project processes maybe was broken or not working as well as it could. On the other hand, as we've already talked about today, I'd love to see a higher level of interaction between developers in the project and the technical committee as a body. And if that came in the form of asking more questions or more advice on our mailing list or you know, possibly taking advantage of us for uh, you know, some mentoring and mediation in a private context uh, if, if Ian's uh, current proposal that's being floated actually sort of wins its way all the way through the process or, or those sorts of things, I'd be more than happy to see you know, us as a group taking a more active role even if it's not in the form of having more bugs filed against us and, and answering more, you know, making more decisions that, because other people are somehow failing to make more of the decisions on a regular basis. Um, yeah, I would, uh, I, I would follow up, I guess, to that by saying I, I, would like the, I would like the number of issues that are brought to us to reflect the actual rate of failure in the project. Uh, so if uh, it 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 doesn't it doesn't seem to me that the number of things that are brought to us reflect the true uh, extent of of dissent, uh, and uh, while I would like there to be less dissent, uh, I would also like um, it to actually be making progress. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, the the notion of back pressure is, a, is an excellent one. Um, I would uh, if. If the result of that were that developers put more effort into um, explaining things coherently and uh, justifying their actions, I, I don't want developers to have to justify every single thing they do, but when, when things get contentious, uh, people ought to be putting in some effort. And uh, in if, if, the, if the result of a more active technical committee was um, 
uh, developers having to put in a bit more effort to explain what they're doing, then I think that would be good for everybody. We we would like to avoid uh, too much failure, and so obviously we prefer when uh, people don't have to go to the technical committee. But I would like to suggest you maybe to get more in to to see it in the other direction, maybe get more involved in, in the project on mailing lists and discussions to avoid the problem before they come to the point where you have to join. I mean, if you look at what uh, Russ does, I mean. Uh, is helping a lot in driving mm. forward some uh, important discussion or calming down when it comes down to problems. And if one or two other members of the technical committee could do the same, I think it could uh, really improve the atmosphere of discussion, the important, at least on the event level. That's probably a reasonable criticism of, uh, of several of us, myself included. Um, the, uh, uh, I, w I would like to avoid the perception that we're participating as members of the technical committee and thereby sort of squashing dissent or something. But uh, but yeah, in general, I think that's right. Good. I think we have just about two minutes left now. So if there are no f three minutes left, so if there are no further uh, questions, I think we could stop it. I think we could stop at this point if there are no further questions. Peter, okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thanks. And I will just reiterate that we're all here for the duration of the conference. Feel free if you have thoughts later on to come by and grab us and ask questions or, or have more conversation. Thanks again. So thanks. The dinner will be served in 15 minutes right on the other side.